Now we review Velma, episode two, Candy Woman. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have seen the second episode of Velma. You should really thank me for watching this crap for you, because I thought the first episode was bad. I hated this episode. There are three basic plots going on. I mean, uh, maybe even four. It's rather convoluted. Look, the, the basic thing is that Velma is trying to get a copy of the cold case uh, regarding her mother's disappearance. Okay, the file. And, um... Daphne, her parents, her two lesbian adoptive moms have it. So... You know, Daphne is like, all right, you know, give me 500 bucks and I'll get you the case. And there's a storyline where Daphne and Velma go out and uh, uh, try to get Velma to raise the money for, for the case. I don't really want to spoil too much about that, just in case you might see that. Then there's a second plot line regarding that where uh, Norville, not Shaggy, Shaggy's name is Norville, but they never call him Shaggy in this. But Norville goes out there, and he tries to get the money uh, to, to give to Velma because he wants to hit that. And then there's the, the, the other thing there, which is the case of Fred going to court for murders. And they're, they're trying to prove him innocent. Uh... Yeah, again, this is very, very convoluted episode. There's a lot going on. None of the stories are particularly bad. It's just that, you know, with the focus there, it's very hard for us to look at these stories and be like, yeah, okay, uh, you know, this is what's it's like, you know, the characters are not very likable. Uh, there's this weird sort of forced drug culture thing going on in there. And really, you know, again, it's just like, God, this doesn't feel anything like Scooby-Doo. And I know that Scooby-Doo was Scooby-Doo because of the family dynamic of, or the group dynamic, and, you know, the dog and everything. But these characters are so different I guess it's their evolution we're supposed to be looking at, but really, I mean, again, this is not a cartoon for children. This is a cartoon for oddly perverted adults who always wanted to see Vilma and Daphne bang. Okay. And I mean, if you want to see that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, I've never really thought of that until watching this, but I guess that's what this is. There's no nudity in this episode, by the way. That's the thing. The first one was like, we're getting all the nudity out of the way. You're going to see a lot of cartoon butts in this one. Now the second one's like, okay, the cartoon butts are over. This is about drugs, lesbians, and the law. All right. Weird. Again, uh, I don't know why I keep watching this. Maybe because I have access to it. I am an Amazon Prime member, but uh, it, it's an odd, odd show. Anyway, you know, again, it's a very small demographic there. Fans of this sort of thing only. Very adult. I mean, it, it's a step beyond Beavis and Butthead there. And I like Beavis and Butthead. They were a lot more funny and whimsical. This is a lot more serious and not funny. And although the body horror aspect is not as strong in this one, it is still there. So anyway, that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear yours. Down in the comments below. I, of course, am Richard. <coughs> Hi, folks. It's me, Barry, again. That's right, the, the strawberry poison dart frog adopted by Random Street Theater from the World Wildlife Fund. And I'm here to remind you that for every thousand subscribers, this channel 
Buys one of these necklaces I have on, which are bracelets for humans. That's from the company 4Ocean. And they pull a pound of trash out of the ocean every time this channel does that. So you should be a good person, comment, like, and subscribe, so that this channel can afford to pull pounds of trash out of the ocean and adopt animals like me, for conservation's sake. I'm Barry.